Good evening guys, how are we doing? Um, welcome to my video. Uh, I decided to do a little bit of a vlog series about, um, there's a few things that it's containing, but essentially it's about consciousness, sobriety, health, and fatherhood. Um, my journey from being a very unhealthy person uh, to changing my whole health around, losing a bunch of weight, getting sober and being a dad. Uh, things have changed a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, so I really wanted to document my journey and go through some things that I think will add some value to anybody who's trying to lose weight, give up drinking, um, clean up their diet and be a more authentic version of themselves, improve their health, improve their mindset and get conscious about their life. And I want to take you back to a time where I was in a totally different mindset. Back when I was 15, 16, I was a fat kid. And uh, I gotta be honest at that time, I, I never ever thought that I would lose weight. Um, I was in a, in a place where I'd grown up for years uh, being the fat kid, growing up, going through school um, my mum and dad didn't really like, put any put, like, put any restriction on what I could eat or drink and uh, uh, things may be a little bit different back then uh, where parents didn't put too many restrictions on what their kids ate um, I don't know I mean I've spoken to my mum about it and uh, she says that they're, they're, you know things were different back then but nevertheless, it, it led me to be a fat kid. And um, this is the interesting thing, is that when you get older, the patterns that you've learned become who you are. Um, you're building on who you are through your journey. So. I identified with who I was. I mean, that's what the ego does. I identified with who I was, and I was the fat kid. I was. I. I clearly remember being uncomfortable around people. Um, I clearly remember about uh, not wanting girls to touch me. I didn't have a girlfriend until I was. Oh man. 18, I mean, I lost my virginity, uh, I don't even think it was, I think I must have been 19. Um, I was petrified of being touched. I was so insecure about my own body, um, so unhappy about <clears throat> who I was. But the, the thing is, I couldn't, I couldn't visualize, I couldn't see me being any different or, or being a different person, um, being the fat kid, being, a, my mum used to say, and my dad used to say, and my granddad used to say, the Dunfords are just big. That's, that's my family name, Dunford. Dunfords are just big. You know, that's who we are. We're big boned, we're, we're big, we've got big legs. And I mean, that's bullshit. Because I've proved it wrong now but these patterns that family tell you and you believe them, it becomes part of who you are. I clearly remember feeling that being fat was my identity. It was just who I was and I never ever thought it would change. I just never thought it would change until, I mean, we used to go to Spain on family holidays every every year and 
every year we would go over there for a month and we were very lucky we used to go away to the to sunny spain for our holidays every year and i was always too scared to take my t-shirt off i i mean call it crazy i mean i could have just gone on a diet but i never I never thought it was possible. I never thought it was actually possible to lose weight. So I went through all these years with being a fat kid and not not thinking it was possible to lose weight. I mean, just just crazy, right? Um, got to the point where it was, I mean, I was depressed. My brother was skinny, a good looking guy. And he was, you know, not skinny, but slim and good body. And we used to get attention from girls. And it was just horrible growing up with all these raging hormones. And not being able to act on them. Just being the girl's friend in the friend zone, constantly in the friend zone. That's how I grew up with my teens. Um, but my mum actually uh, took action. And I had large breasts uh, I can't remember the name of it but there is a condition where men get large breasts um, and I mean they look like women's breasts They're really not nice um, so I was a fat kid plus I had these these breasts and it was nasty but my mum my mum bless her she she could see how it was affecting me uh, I wouldn't even go swimming, wouldn't take my t-shirt off, wouldn't, you know, it was, it was a nightmare. Um, I'm deeply, deeply unhappy. And it, it, she quite clearly saw that that was the case. And when we, we got back from holiday one year and she took me to see some specialists who'd done hormone tests. They, 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 you know, they looked at the size of my testicles. They, I mean, they'd done everything. It was very uncomfortable, but I went through it because I wanted to try and see if I could sort something out because um, it was it was just not nice at all. But I ended up having long 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 story short, I ended up having uh, like a breast reduction and plastic surgery on on my chest. Um, and then after I had that done, I lost a bunch of weight because. Um, after the surgery, I was in hospital for quite some time. Uh, my dad at this time had left and he wasn't living here. Um, so I didn't really have a, a dad or a male figure to be able to sort of uh, support me through this, which was a bit strange. But I still identified as the fat kid, even though I'd lost, lost them. And I, I used to, I remember looking in the mirror thinking, wow, they're gone. When it all healed up, and it took quite a while to heal up, when it all healed up, I remember thinking, wow, like, they're not there anymore. That That's that's crazy. I didn't have these big breasts. Um, and I, I slowly remember taking photos of myself and looking at myself and actually not identifying with what I saw in the picture. I keep like, looking at this photo, not identifying with what I saw uh, in the picture. Um, really weird uh, I went over after a while um, that was I was 18 when that happened and I started to get a little bit more confidence with girls um, and I lost a little bit of weight not a huge amount but I lost a little bit of weight just enough to take the edge off um, but I was still f f with the fat kid um, I mean honestly quite honestly it's still the fat kid in here um, it will always be a part of my identity that um, I'm conscious enough now to sort of separate myself from it. But I can quite clearly feel that part of myself because it is part of me. Um, it's, it's insane. <laughs> but it's one of the reasons why I want to talk about this because it's such a powerful thing that if you can consciously remove yourself from that from identifying with a, a part of yourself you will allow that side to, to be moved over so you can work through it um, I remember going to New Zealand when I was about 20 
uh, 21, something like that. And my dad saw me, and by this time I'd piled all the way back on. And my dad saw me, I hadn't seen him for quite a while. And by this time, dad was, he was working in gyms. He saw me and he helped, you know, when he saw me, he couldn't believe how big I'd got. And he helped me lose a bunch of weight. And it was really pretty horrendous, but I wanted to impress him. I wanted to stick by him. And I went on this extreme diet. But like, and it was extreme diet, it was horrible. But I did lose a load of weight. And I remember thinking, this is crazy. Like, I look totally different. And it was summer in New Zealand, which is, um, I mean, it was beautiful. This is one memory that sticks in my mind. I was driving a, a nice sports car uh, across the forecourt of a garage. And I was paying for some, some I was going to go and pay for some gas that I'd just put into the car. And I, I had no t-shirt on in the car, just a pair of tracksuit bottoms. And I challenged myself to walk across the forecourt without my top on because it had been such a wound, such a traumatic experience for me growing up, not ever wanting to take my top off. I got to the point where I could nearly see the top two abs and I could do this. I, I mean, I, could, I knew this and I had shaved my chest to, to, and I com looked completely different because I'm quite a hairy motherfucker. I'm quite a hairy guy. And uh, I'd shaved my chest and I got out of my car and I walked across the, the forecourt to go and pay for my petrol. And to anyone else, I was just a, a, a slim dude, walking like pretty good body, I guess, walking across the forecourt with no t-shirt on in the middle of summer, which was, I guess, quite normal. But for me, I, all eyes were on me. I felt so insecure, so open, so uncomfortable walking across that forecourt in that garage. The way it's burnt into my my mind. I pay for my petrol quickly, and it's everybody looking at me. I was so fucking uncomfortable. I remember walking very quickly, getting back in my car, turning the engine off, and driving off real quick. And I put my T-shirt back on when I got in my car. Um, it was it was it was quite horrible. Um, <laughs> I went up and down with with weight um, due to not being able to control um, my weight. The only thing that has been able to control my weight is having a healthy a healthy outlook on life. Since I gave up drinking, since I really looked at my, not dieting, but not dieting, not not binge drinking and just going or a month without and then going crazy again. Just constantly eating healthy, not no yo-yo diets. Just, I mean, I went vegan over three years ago now and uh, I would never have ever thought that that would be something I would do. But being that being my my lifestyle now, I no drink, um, eating a vegan diet, everything being, I've, I've cut out most grains and I don't miss them. I, if I have a big meal now, I get I get really like, not bloated, but I get really full. The amount I can survive on now, I feel quite, quite like satiated. Like I'm very, very satisfied with the meal that I eat now. I eat a bowl of food, one big bowl of food a day, and I'll have a little bit of picking, like some fruit, maybe a, like a like a healthy milkshake, like banana cacao milkshake or something like that during the day. But I don't eat any bread, no pizza, no fast food, no nothing, and I don't miss it at all. And I used to be a terror, like a real terror with my food, but. Now knowing that what I'm eating is nourishing me, I don't miss eating that crap. There are there are times when, like now, like I'll look at a cheat meal or a cheat something will be like these healthy, like these health bars, these ones that are made with dates and nuts 
Um, I mean, they're a bit processed, but like, they're not bad at all. They're like one. I wouldn't looked at them back in the day and gone, oh "My God, what is that? I'm going to eat that." Now they're like a, a real treat for me. But like, the difference now, on, on how I am to what I used to be, is insane. Um, I mean, people can change. It's what we're here to do. Uh, improve, change those patterns. But after all this, after everything I've done, after becoming a teetotal vegan, losing a bunch of weight, and you know, really changing things around, the strength is there. I will never go back to being like that. But the scars and the trauma is there, and the work continues. Like I work on this all the time and part of this video is the work trying to help other people this is the whole reason this is happening is for me to help other people all these wounds all these trauma and past um i don't want anyone to either fully understand it and um, i don't want anyone to go through that it's horrible i'm just here to say that things don't need to get to that point they don't need to get to that point. You you need to seek out help and get mentorship, guidance, coaches, anybody who can help. Because if I hadn't have helped or got anyone to help me, I don't know what would have happened. I'll be honest. There were points there were points where I was really, really depressed. And I I honestly thought of ending it like that came into my my mind, especially the more I drank and the more drugs I did. Um, I I definitely thought about ending my life at some points. Um, so it's it's crucial that if you feel like this, no matter how old you are, always ask for help. I would never have got anywhere unless my mum and my dad would have helped me even though my dad was one of these like marine guys he used to chuck water on me cold water to get me out of bed he made me realize that it was possible to lose weight he made me realize and broke that pattern of i never you know for me never thinking that it was actually possible to do he made me think it was possible um so i thank him for that and i thank my mum but that's what parents are there for um, even though they installed those bad eating and drinking habits in me, they also helped me out of it. They probably don't know it to what capacity they did, but they did. But seek out help, guys. Seek out help. And whatever you do, don't ever think that it's not possible. Um, because I've been in the depths, the deep, dark depths, thinking it, it, it's never possible to change. Um, and I couldn't be more different now. And if I can do it, you surely can. Um, because back then, and again, this is not willpower. It's tapping into the consciousness, using your heart and tapping in to a higher frequency, unlocking your pure consciousness, your divine self and breaking through those patterns, those learned patterns and those self but like those beliefs, the more the more you unlock, the more you do that, the more you continue and get self respect and self love, the easier it becomes. Um and it's so powerful once you realise it. It's so powerful. Um I'm gonna leave it there guys. Uh I will do another one of these with a buddy of mine um, who has a, had a similar experience himself when he was growing up. Um, I'm going to do a version of this on podcast when we, we get through this um, this is isolation thing. I can't email, I mean, I can't uh, interview anyone. And this is off the cuff, really. Um, I'm just going to put a few of these videos out there just see if they can help anyway but thanks for listening if you've got to the 20 minute mark now 
Um, I hope that it can be of some value. Um, and there's just another little notch on the on the belt there of the story of of me from being a fat kid to growing up and uh, knocking the the fad diets on the head and realizing that that stuff can actually happen and it's not willpower don't get me wrong it's tough you know willpower is an element but that's not what gets you through it really isn't um thanks for listening guys um if it did resonate uh please hit the subscribe button and uh share please comment i i, I really welcome anybody's comments i would love to talk to anybody who's got any anything that they would like to ask me um have a look on my website matthewdunford.com and um i hope to speak to anybody who's interested in asking any questions uh, guys i'll see you next time thank you so much I'll speak to you soon